All right, I'm gonna sit down. I'm gonna stay sitting down. Sorry for everybody, good morning. So my name is Jamil Loret, and I'm coming from uh, the South Bronx. I'm representing the Point CDC. The Point CDC is in the Hunts Point section of the Bronx, and we've been there for over 20 years. And our work is in youth development, uh, uh, revitalization of the community, and um, In youth development, and that's where I come from. You know, I'm actually a musician. I'm a bachatero. I make bachata music, and that's how I got started to work in this organization, uh, just teaching kids how to play music. And and completely relate to what you're saying, it's easier to take community organizers and teach them technology than taking technologies and bring them into the community organizing. So that's what I was doing, and now I'm doing technology. Um, so uh, my project in, uh, right now is uh, free funds for Wi-Fi. Uh, our goal is to create an emergency mesh network that will provide communication to people and businesses during floods, uh, when there's power outage, we'll work as an internet. Well, by the way, all of these uh, initiatives and projects are somewhat related. The project in Detroit inspired a project in uh, Bethel in the, um, New York City, and that then inspired a larger effort which I am part of, and, and this is taking place in uh, multiple parts of the city. Let me see if we can get to that. Yeah, so there's five organizations that are being part of this effort um, um, in Harlem, Guano, Far Rockaway, uh, King's Bay, and I represent the South Bronx. And um, all of these communities are prone to flood, uh, so they are in high risk areas. And the, this uh, grant is part of a larger. Um, effort uh, that is funded by RISE uh, NYC. Uh, their goal is to help businesses mitigate climate change through technology and innovation. But we're community organizations that we run in this, so we try to change that or move that in the direction that also supports the communities that we're trying to connect. Um, this is a map of Hans Point, um, basically what it looks like, and what you see here is the businesses that we've been able to enroll to support with this technology. Um, at the bottom, you can see the Hunts Point Produce Market. Anybody familiar with the Hunts Point Produce Market? Yes, no? Uh, it's the largest food distribution market in, in the United States of America. So if there's a flood there, a lot of people will suffer like, throughout the nation. My personal inspiration to be part of this project is that I understand the struggle of not being connected. Um, it's very interesting. I come from a third world country, the Dominican Republic. You guys familiar with the Dominican Republic? <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Uh, yeah, right. Um, I grew up, I, I, I know what it's like to have to rely on somebody else to, to submit your paper going to college. I know what that is like. And then I saw that struggle in my, my kids. I call them my kids. These are the young people that I was teaching music. Now, uh, that later became my uh, digital stewards. Out of all these young people you see here, about two or three of them actually has have broadband in their homes. So most of them, they are just making, uh, doing papers in, in their phones. And this is in New York City. You know, this is not even a rural community. So we have issues about connectivity and we are literally disenfranchising new uh, generations um, right in the middle of the city. So that's worth mentioning. Who are the digital stewards? Uh, these are young people, they're self-motivated and they have an interest in community and technology. Um, they are meant to be the first response team once we um, have a natural disaster, so they're learning the technology. And they're also passionate about learning and educating. Um, and through their work with the mystifying technology, because that's a big issue, right? The mystifying technology, you know, like we don't understand how the internet works. We don't, you know, the majority of people don't, it's, it's like magic, you know, you open up your phone out of nowhere and then you have all this information, how does it work? You know, but it's not really magic. Uh, how do we demystify technology? We basically do a lot of um, uh, meetings, gatherings, uh, where we do this thing that we borrow from the guy, the discotheques. Yeah. It's like this community gatherings, community meetings where we teach people how to uh, perhaps um, how to print a cable, or maybe we teach them how to do um, how do the PNK works, which is a new part of, of the educational methods that we're using. Um, and then Teresa is going to talk a little bit more about the PNK. Um, just like a working model. And a little suitcase. 
Um, and then, you know, through my work and their work, we, uh, we build relationships with businesses in the community, you know, about technology. And believe me, it's very hard to convince people that they need new ways to connect, especially when they can afford the internet, all right? Um, what do I think that we need in order to, to do these things uh, better and, and, and more in the future? Well, we, we need people that create policy to understand that these communities that we work in, they're already resilient. They already have ways to connect. They already have ways to talk. And um, we're not bringing new things into these communities. It's not gonna make a long-term term change if this uh, technology and device are foreign to the communities. We can see in the case of Puerto Rico, you know, there's, there's antennas, there's technology, it gets damaged, but then it takes months and months for them to be repaired because the people are at stake, people are suffering, are the ones who have the, the first initial intention to fix it, but they don't have the tools to do it, you know? Um, we also want our policymakers to understand that technological diversity is important, it's necessary for resiliency, and what I mean by that is um, diversity in the sense of governance, and in ways that technology work. In other words, the ISP model is great, it's worked for, for many years, but it's, it's not the only model that should exist. And communities should have the right to own networks. And that's what we create that. The Detroit experience, I'm, I'm creating that in Hunts Point and all the power organizations are doing that. There's all the ways to do the internet. It doesn't have to be owned by a single company and whatnot. Especially now with technology being so affordable, changing so fast, and, my fellows are going to talk a little bit more about that. We believe that digital stewardship is very important, it's essential, it's key to then build these resilienceships, uh, resiliency in communities, um, in, in teaching people, local people, how to run and manage these networks, right? And, um, and finally, I think uh, leaders that are building and doing these initiatives in communities should also be at the table when we, when policy is being created, you know? Because we know what's happening. And I'm, what I mean by leaders is like active leaders in these fields of communication and, and alternative ways to connect people. That's my bottom line, thank you.